Hi everyone, welcome back to the Triathlon Channel. So in this video, I'm gonna go through what kit you need to prepare for a race. Uh, everything from the essentials to some nice to haves. And I'm gonna share with you how I go about mentally preparing um, for the race in terms of having making sure you've got your kit ready and you are as stress-free as possible come race day so that you can give it everything. Let's get straight into what you need. So the first discipline is swimming, as you all know, hopefully, anyway. Um, so how I go about doing is I lay everything out in terms of order of what it's, I'm gonna be doing. So swim, bike, run. So in the morning, I will have my tri suit, I'll put that on. Making sure that I've got a goggles. I've also got a spare pair of goggles because that is, although it's a nice to have, it can be essential as well because you never know what might happen. You could um, have a, a strap that breaks, you might be able to help someone else that has forgotten. And um, it is a, I almost deem it as an essential anyway to have two pairs at least of goggles just in case you never know what happens. A swim cap, you normally get provided that on the day, so because I will be given that on the day, I'm just using my one that I use in the pool and for training, but you will be given a swim cap. And then, especially if you're racing in the UK, you 100% always need a wetsuit, so there's no, no problems in ever worrying about not having a wetsuit swim in the UK, so make sure you've got your wetsuit. So that is now the swim. So the best way to look at it is almost mentally dress yourself as what do I need? And that's exactly what I've just done there. So for the bike now, and I'm gonna work from head downwards. So you need a helmet, 100% mandatory, and there's no getting away from it. You'll need it to check in your bike anyway on the day, and they'll check for the fit and that it's serviceable, and it's gonna do the job. It's not been battered and been in accidents. So you need a helmet. You then need potentially sunglasses. I always use sunglasses regardless of the weather and um, some helmets have visors, so you might not need sunglasses. Well, you won't need sunglasses then. I've got a helmet with a visor, but I'm choosing to race in this one with sunglasses on the weekend. You've obviously got your tri suit on already. You've then got a um, pair of socks, potentially, not necessarily everyone racing in them. My shoes, you don't need to. Uh, these are tri sh shoes anyway, so I could race bare barefoot without socks, but I choose to go in socks. I feel more comfortable, uh, my feet feel warmer, so I just, that is personal preference, but you don't need to. And gloves. You, you don't, again, not mandatory, most people won't, um, as far as I can see anyway when I'm at races but I, I like gloves, I feel more comfortable in them, and I go with gloves. So if you do feel more comfortable in gloves, don't forget your gloves. Then you're moving on to the run. So again, we'll start from the head. So you've got a cap or a visor, potentially a headband, sweatband, whatever it might be that you use, some sunglasses, if you're okay running in sunglasses. Again, some people can't run in sunglasses. Then you've already got your tri suit on still. You might want to do a full change. So if you are doing a full change, don't forget your shorts and vest or t-shirt, whatever it is you choose to run in. Some people do make a full change. And then of course your running shoes. That is everything kit wise that you need to get you to do the race. And um, one, to do it safely, but also legally, because you won't be able to race if you forget anything. So let's move on to sort of setting up and other bits of kit that you don't need. So we, we've done the full body now. Now let's move on to nutrition. So the way I do it is I break it down into, uh, so here's all my nutrition. I've already got a pre-boxed up ready for the race that I'm gonna be doing. So I will set that up in terms of, so I have a caffeine gel just before I go into the water. So I put that with a swim. I will then take the nutrition that I'm gonna have on the bike which is there and that will go into the bike. So on race morning, just when I'm checking the bike over and getting ready for the race, I will put all the nutrition into the bike, mix the sachets into the bottle of the water and place them on the bike. And then I've got my nutrition that I'll have on the run. And then I will have that set up ready to go. Now I don't have it with me as well, but I have my race belt, which will have your number on and 
uh, one of the kids have misplaced it, so that's the reason I don't have it, but I will find it before I go. But anyway, uh, a race belt is, again, it's, you, you could use clips. So a race belt, although a nice to have and pretty essential, there are other ways of doing it. So I'm not classing it as essential. So that is everything in terms of clothing, protection, nutrition that you need. Now let's get into sort of nice to haves and some things that you might not realize were nice to haves because you just never thought of it. And it's one of those things that I've only learned from experience and until you, you realize uh, you don't know what you don't know, exactly what I'm trying to say. So let's start with heart rate monitor. You might choose to race them. I don't always race in a heart rate monitor. I just go off feel, so I'm not too worried about the overall numbers on it. So if you do want one, take a race, um, a heart rate monitor, a pump. Now, most race venues, especially the bigger ones like Ironman, Outlaw, etc., they do provide you with these, but they normally only have a few. So everyone's running around flapping in the morning and you might struggle to get this. And remember in the beginning what I said about just trying to stay as relaxed as possible and making sure that if you know you've got everything, that is one less problem or one less thing you need to worry about in the morning. Now, you don't want to get there and try and rush around trying to look for a pump, just take your own um, and you, you've got one ready, good to go. And then you can help others if needs be, if they're running around flapping. So that is the pump. Then I use some chamois cream, I use a warm up cream, and potentially I might use a sun cream, uh, depending on the weather. So if it's really hot, I will obviously, um, those things all again help. A bike computer, again, not, not an uh, a necessity, uh, a, a very, very much nice to have, and I would have this uh, with me as well. I then have some flops. Now, I don't generally use these ones, I just, I've ordered some but they haven't arrived yet, and I use cheap one or two pound pair of flops or some hotel slippers or whatever you, you can get, something cheap that you can discard and you're not worried about, um, because it's really cold in the mornings and when you stood barefoot waiting to get into the swim that can obviously it, it's cooling you down and you, you might have just warmed up etc but also just for for being comfortable um so that is why i use flops something i wish i had a couple of years maybe three or four years ago at weymouth when i didn't have it. and that's where i learned so that one of the, the lessons i had learned from a race another one is toilet roll or tissues or something um, that you might need because the portaloos don't always have and everyone was flapping around with race nerves um, can cause a bit of a problem so always have that in the bag that again is a nice to have another key element and something and I've forgotten this before and it really adds a lot of stress to you is charges Charges for your bike computer, charges for your watch, whatever it is that you might be using. Even if you do charge them up before you go or the day before, etc. I like I did and I learned the lesson. For whatever reason, I charged up my bike computer, went in the morning to turn it on and the battery was dead. So I don't I don't know what happened, but the battery was dead. So I always charge it up overnight and then I take it with me in the morning when I go and rack up ready to go. So I know everything is fully charged and there's so many different things now to think about. Like I've got my bike computer, I've got my watch, I've got my whoop strap. So they, they all things that need charging and I'll make sure that they at 100% on the race morning. So they're gonna get me through the four hours or so for the half distance that I'm doing. So that is pretty much Everything you need. Another nice to have, which again, I've learned just from the UK, is some sort of coat or hoodie that you can wear in the morning, wear after the race. And again, from if, you, if you're wearing something warm, not unlike a coat, then you, or you've got no one to pass it on to, so I'll give that to my wife just before I go into the swim. So I'm staying nice and warm, I'm comfortable. If it's raining, I'm gonna be dry until I get in the water anyway, but I can pass that on. But if you don't have anyone that you can pass your kit on, then you can have something that you not going to miss if you don't get it back. So you can just discard it when you're going down to the swim and that will be you. And that is everything you need. 
Uh, hopefully, I haven't missed anything. I haven't missed any of the essentials. I know that because I've prepped it myself, ready for my race. And like I say, mentally, it's giving me a um, a bit of a gain because I'm going to go in a bit more relaxed. But if I've missed anything, please leave it down in the comments. Let's help each other. And if you've picked up any tips that I might be missing, I'd be really appreciative if you could share them with me because constantly learning. That's one of the things I love about this. You pick up something new at every race. Um, so thanks for watching and. Good luck with your racing.